to Graceful Conversations, the podcast that brings you incredible stories from inspiring individuals. I am Debbie Bissoon, and today's episode promises to be a journey of discovery and resilience. Joining us today is Scott Dunn, Group Managing Director of Dream Entertainment Limited and Director of Exodus Carnival. Now, Scott has been making waves in the industry for many a year, so we are very excited to have him right here on set with us. Hi, Scotty. Hi, Debbie. Can I call you Scotty? You can call me Scotty. Brother Scott. <laughs> Good to see you, <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, Scott. I mean, Dream Entertainment Limited, it has become a household name, so it has Exodus Carnival as well. But we have to start from the top, right? How did this dream come about for you? Give us the background information. My journey in entertainment started almost 30 years ago. I think this year will be my 30th year in the industry. Uh, so doing events from then, you know, progress to 2009, you know, when a group of big promoters came together and said, yo, we wanted to have this dream experience for people in the grill and started Dream Weekend then. And then it's gone on to, you know, more and more events, Exodus Carnival and some other stuff along the way. Well, when you started initially, did you think that it would grow into what it has become today? No, certainly not. I mean, um, you know, obviously when we started events, it was just, you know, you know, something that was kind of like a hobby, something yeah. that was doing fun. And then, you know, along the way, we realized that, you know, we had the potential to really build an entertainment tourism product and something that we could actually um, have a large impact on Jamaica and, you know, ultimately the globe, true yeah. dream. Yeah, wow. That is really incredible. You know, this is graceful conversations, right? Of course. And I know you have had experience with the GK Financial Group. Tell us about your experience with the group. Yeah, so uh, I actually was an employee within the group. Yeah. You were an employee? <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, yeah, so in 2001, I joined Allied Insurance Brokers for the first of, I believe, three or four different stints. So off and on, would have worked with um, Allied Insurance Brokers for about 12 years, but I also have a lot of history, um, you know, doing business with, you know, Western Union, FX Trader, First Global Bank, GK Capital Management, you know, throughout the group, I've done a lot of business, GK Insurance. Yeah, long, long history with the group. Seriously? Even a longer history with Grace Kennedy, because my father had worked for Grace Kennedy at one point as well. He was GM of Hilo, so yeah. G GKFG is very It's been a part of your life. Very really. near to me. Exactly. Sure. And would you time. say the experience of working with them helped you in terms of your entrepreneurial pursuits as well? Oh, oh for sure. Yeah. I mean, I said, I learned a lot, you know, particularly at Allied. I had some, you know, great bosses, Sandra Donaldson, Grace Burnett, Amanda B. Pat, along the years. And, learned a lot you know about business you know obviously particular insurance but risk management which has actually helped me in my career in events because mm -hmm. you know you know doing large events festivals carnivals uh, is a lot about managing risk you know and for a lot of people they don't get that and that's something that's you know just always top of mind with me in terms of managing risk both financially as well as the risk of you know managing individuals thousands of individuals mm -hmm. within a space so you know yeah. It certainly has helped. Yeah, you talk about managing risk, right? Um, being an entrepreneur, managing so many people, how do you find a personal balance? This is graceful conversation, so right. how do you give yourself grace? Yeah, um, it's difficult. I, I wouldn't say I'm always good at it, but um, I try. I say I have, you know, I have a wife and I have two teen and preteen daughters. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, I have to find the time to spend with family and to do stuff for myself. Um, so it's just about really trying to strike that balance, you know, just knowing that sometimes you just have to shut off mm -hmm. from the world. Because when you're in events and entertainment, particularly us that dealing with a lot of people globally, you know, people think that you should be on, you know, 24 yeah. hours a day and you can't always be on. Sometimes you really have to shut down, you know, just sometimes you need to just turn off my phone and give myself <laughs> some time. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So outside of now, your work experience with the GK Group, yeah. Uh, before mm -hmm. becoming an entrepreneur, yeah. now with your own business, yeah. you do do business with GK Financial. Oh, of course, yes. And they've been a resource for you, Yeah, right? so, I mean, uh, my customer um, of a number of uh, companies throughout the group, you know, all our insurance business is placed through Allied. Yeah. You know, ultimately, they have placed some of our business with GK Insurance. You know, done a lot of business with First Global Bank. I do a lot of FX stuff with FX Trader. You know, obviously, move money through Western Union. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's been... Um, great experience, you know, 
working with GKFG and working and growing with people who've been part of my life for a long time. Because again, a lot of the team members throughout the group are people who I've known for a lot of years. Also within Dream, we also manage events for a lot of companies with the group. Like you and I have worked together on events, you know, for GKFG. So yeah, it's been it's been a great experience. Yeah, and to have a financial institution though that can provide good solution for you and manage your finances well is a big deal as an entrepreneur because it's, it's extremely important. Yeah, it takes <laughs> extremely, a lot of pressure off of you, right? It's extremely, extremely important to have you know good professionals around you, people yeah. who you can trust and people who have your best interests at heart. And I've always found that you know, throughout the group is, you know, very professional. I say, you know, Chris Kennedy, over a hundred years old, you know, it's, you know, they've been around people, you know, they take it very seriously in terms of what they manage people and manage people's problems. Yeah, yeah, for a hundred years, they <laughs> have been doing it. You know, yeah. um, you, you have been doing Dream Entertainment and entrepreneurship in general now for how long? Well, so Dream Entertainment is, this is 15 years. It's actually Dream Weekend's 15th anniversary. Well, happy anniversary! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I'm, I mean, I think I've been an entrepreneur for life. Yeah. You know, I was the kid at school that always had something selling at school, um, and was doing events. Something <laughs> like bad juice and yeah, chips, yeah, right? Yeah, like whatever. <laughs> literally, like whatever. Like you know, whatever I could get my hands on for cheap, I would carry to school and sell it for a little bit more. Wow! Uh, you know, even at Walmart is where you know my journey in entertainment really started. So I was doing. I was student council president at Walmart and we used to do sound clashes at lunchtime, like a mock sound clash, you know, where different people represent different sounds. And that's how we would we use that as a, a big fundraiser um, while I was at Walmart. So the journey has been long. And I mean, I left Walmart in 1992. So yeah. that's, a, that's a long time we've been dabbling in entertainment. Seriously, <laughs> entertainment and entrepreneurship because exactly. you were selling. Exactly. 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 <laughs> you spoke earlier on about the risk risk management that you learned being a part of the GK Financial Group as well. But the other lessons of entrepreneurship, let's, let's kind of deep dive into those lessons because oftentimes, you know, entrepreneurs, especially starting out, you're not sure what road to take, that kind of thing. It doesn't usually come with a template, right? No. <laughs> you have to kind of figure it out as you go along. Yeah. yeah. And you kind of have to know what you're signing up for. I feel like so many people want to be an entrepreneur, but not necessarily everybody's cut out to be entrepreneurs, you know? And that's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just, you know, different people are meant to do different things. You have different callings, but I say, you know, one of the things that I've learned, you know, you know as an entrepreneur and within the events business is, is budgeting mm -hmm. is key. And again, come back to, you know, financial planning, you know, like I think so many people don't actually set realistic budgets. And, it, and even if they do, they don't stick to them. And that's, you know, I think that's my, probably one of my strongest um, areas within business is that I'm very disciplined about budgets and sticking to budgets and, you know, I never hear um, from my budgets and I think that's, that's done us well a lot of years. Yeah. Because especially in, you know, when in the creative industries you have people who, you know, have big ideas and have, you know, people around me and I need that, I need the people coming with the big ideas but I have to be the one that says, oh, you know, Maybe hold back a little bit on that because yes, it'll be an amazing concept. But we're gonna lose our shirt if we do it, mm -hmm. if we do it that way. So you know, it's good to have that balance within business. That's another thing. You know, have partners that you know complement you. You know that you know they're strong in different areas. Again, within Dream, you know our backgrounds are everything from me in, in risk management to people like PP, who's an engineer, and Ron Burke and Carlos, who have you know computer science backgrounds and there's people with marketing backgrounds and it's you know it's a host of different skill sets that are around us and we bring those together and realize okay yeah you're best at that so you focus on that i'm best at this i focus on that so you know as a young entrepreneur if you have partners find partners that have different skill sets and trust that you know people handle their areas I love that point about, you know, finding people that align with your goals. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you would admit as well that GK has really uh, found alignment with the Jamaican people and entrepreneurs as well in terms of providing that solution for them. For sure. The time. Yeah. And, mul yeah, and multiple solutions. Yeah. Again, you know, through GKFG, there's just so much different services, you know, from, you know, the money services to the insurance to the banking, you know, there's so much different services. So literally anything that somebody needs, you know, in that financial services, they can find it through, through GKFG. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier on about some of the lessons that you learned. I had a question here that, that <laughs> I was going to ask you, what has been your biggest money lesson to date? Oh, biggest money lesson. You know, I, mean, I, won't, I won't get too specific, but I'll say what you want 
the worst case scenario sometimes can be worse than you think. So the worst case scenario really is, is losing everything. So we've had, uh, you know, within like an event, for example, you know, people will be like, hey, you know, budget is $10 million for the event, you know, but worst case scenario, I'm going to lose $7 because we must do at least $3 million every you know. The worst case scenario is going to lose $10 million. <laughs> I've learned that, and I've learned that one the hard way. You know, whatever, whatever you're putting out there, be prepared to lose it in entrepreneurship because every dollar is at risk. Wow. Every so, dollar is at risk. How do you mitigate that though? Because it, it, does that come back down to, again, as you said, sticking yeah. to the budget, right? Exactly. That's why you have to be very disciplined about your budget because, as I said, you really ex you were exposed. And, in, you know, the world of events and, you know, some, some areas within entrepreneurship, you're going to find that you know sometimes it's, you know, it might be a year of, of of stuff that you're doing that is just relying on one particular moment, one particular day, one weekend, one week. Uh, so you know you kind of have to just manage those costs because so many things can happen in business. You know, yeah. COVID, <laughs> the, the perfect example. Exactly. You know, that thing that nobody ever expected, nobody ever thought that you could go. You know, you potentially would have to go without revenue for two years. Mm -hmm. And us in the events business, that's exactly what had happened to us. Yeah. Um, so. I'm happy you mentioned mm -hmm. that challenge of, um, mm -hmm. I always say life before COVID, yeah. you know, BC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, but in terms of recovery, though, in an industry like entertainment, what was that like? Was it that everybody was just gearing up to go back outside? So it was, you know, everything yes. happened great and grand again? Or did you have to build up back that momentum? To some extent, people, you know, were obviously excited to get back out. Yeah. And there was an initial kind of like explosion of events and everybody was out for a few weeks, but then it kind of tapered back out. And then you had to literally build back um, from scratch in, in a sense for a lot of us. So, uh, you know, I so say you went literally, you know, two years without income. Some of us still maintaining a lot of expenses, you know, also Dream Entertainment, we had 18 people on the payroll when COVID came around. Mm -hmm. And for a long while, we thought this wasn't going to last. So, we, you know, we kept staff, you know, kept different locations that we're paying rent at. We're like, oh, just, we don't want to disrupt things too much. So let's hold out. And then you realize after a while, like, okay, we'll have to scale down. But, um, you know, recover from that in a, in a day, a week, a year. I mean, literally, you know, we're still, we're still recovering from the hits that we took in COVID. So people look and say, oh, yo, things are great and everything is well, but we're, we're still not back uh, to pre-COVID levels. Really? Uh, okay. So, but I say, get in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And we're optimistic. <laughs> exactly. And having strong financial partners, you know, like a GK, um, actually would help in a time like COVID. Of course, of course. Again, <laughs> right? if, there's, if there's ever a time when you need partners, it's like, you know, right. any, any time when you need friends and family. And as we look at, at GKFG as family, that, hey, you know, stick with us through this, ride this room with us, and, you know, yeah. help us to see Because as an entrepreneur, you really want a, a financial institution that you can pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, this is what's happening with my business. Do you have a solution that can help me? Um, what are some of the things that you look for in your financial institution? Um, exactly that, you know, people that are accessible. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very important. People that are open-minded, you know, you find a lot of sometimes, you know, particularly with commercial bankers, they tend to kind of just be a little bit close-minded and only see things a certain way. And, you know, again, if you're in an industry that is not, you know, what everybody else is in, again, a lot of people don't understand entertainment industry events. And just mm -hmm. in an industry that's a little bit different you know um you know sometimes people don't get it but again uh, so you want to find people who kind of understand understand your business understand the challenges and understand that hey this isn't going to last forever and you know ride this through with me and you know we, we can prosper together yeah you know, when, when, when it's over. Give me a grace. <laughs> Give me some grace. Give me exactly. some grace. We all need some grace. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. As an entrepreneur, I mean, how do you define success? Because oftentimes you're thinking to yourself, okay, if I hit this marker, I am great. I am successful. Yeah. But then, you know, at every level, you kind of move the barometer a little bit higher, right? So yeah, I mean, and success that? is different for of different people and I expect it to be. Uh, for me, uh, the stage I am in life now, um, success is really about happiness. I mean, it's like, Whatever you know makes me happy, whatever makes me feel fulfilled, um, that's what I'm looking for at this stage in my life. It wasn't wasn't necessarily always like that, but as I said, right now at this stage of life is about you know just being happy and trying to leave some kind of a legacy, trying to do something that's that's bigger than me or bigger than my company. And we want to do stuff that people look back and say, wow, 
you know that's that's kind of more what I'm driven by now. That's more what gets me excited. Yeah. You know, leaving some type of legacy right. behind. Right. It's not really so much driven by by money so much, which would have been more so when I was young. I would say. And does that legacy look like anything in particular, or do you kind of just build it out as you go along? Um. I mean, in a sense, you know, open to always new things, but it's, it's certainly what would be is that something that lives long beyond you, you know, something that is way after I'm gone that people can look and say, hey, you know, Scott did that, the guys at Dream did that, you know, wow, you know, that was really amazing, you know. I mean, for me, like, our biggest source of pride is, I said, um, the COVID Economic Recovery Task Force, which came out of the, um, the Ministry of Finance during COVID, did a study. And the two largest festivals in Jamaica in terms of economic impact are Carnival in Jamaica and Dream Weekend. We're obviously very central in Carnival in Jamaica with Exodus Carnival. And then obviously Dream is our event. Those two events contribute $9 billion to the Jamaican economy. So that's something that we're super proud about. And that's, that, that motivates me a lot more than what you know happens on, on Dream Entertainment's actual bottom line. Because that is, that's within us and within, you know, a few shareholders, but yeah. something that you know, you know, helps our entire community. You know, 4.3 billion coming into Negril, 4.7 billion coming into Kingston for Carnival. We know that is is quite significant, I'm and that changes that lives. <laughs> <laughs> it changes <laughs> lives, you know. As somebody in the industry, I'm proud of that as well because yeah. oftentimes, you know, you don't hear in that very structured way about you know what the entertainment industry has really offered back to Jamaica. Yeah, it's know? so much. You yeah, know, it, it really the industry has done a lot for for, for the country both you know locally as well as globally to brand jamaica so yeah we should all be proud we we are very proud <laughs> we're very proud before we wrap up uh scotty let me ask you you know as an experienced entrepreneur can i call you that now an experienced <laughs> yeah. veteran entrepreneur what advice would you give uh up and coming entrepreneurs now looking to start out in this time yeah you know the climate right. is very different from when you started out. for sure yeah well i said one be sure that's what you want to do and you're doing it for the right reasons that you're not just thinking that oh, entrepreneurship is the way to generate wealth you know it needs to be a lot more than that and i said you have to recognize that it's not it's not a stable income i want you to just say that again for me because that's that's a good point that you just made right yeah. so it's not the way that you not the way that you might be perceiving it you know people gotcha. think just assume that you know entrepreneurship is just like this and entrepreneurship is like this you know it's like so many the ups and downs right. and yeah. yeah and you have to know if you're somebody who, who's cut off for it because not everybody's cut off some people like their lives very linear you know and I say entrepreneurship will never be like that you know and I say it's, yeah, I mean I've made a ton and I've lost a ton I've been rock bottom when it comes to income and I've you know been sitting on top of the world and I say and it's and it's, it's not going to change I know yeah. there's going to come times where things are going to dip and the other times, but I say you have to be prepared to ride that out. You have to be very disciplined. You have to be willing to to stand on your own two feet. No, you know that you know, nobody's there. You're not necessarily going to have a big structure and a lot of people around you. Sometimes you have to write things out for yourself. And you know you're going to have to find great partners. You know people like GKFG to mm -hmm. go on this ride with. Yeah, and when you're looking, you're looking for a financial partner. So, what should you look for as a as an up and coming entrepreneur? Um, again, people that, that are actually listening to you and understanding yeah. what you do. So, you know, if, if you go and you, you meet with a banker or something, and they just don't seem to get it, it's time to maybe go see somebody else. You know, you know, and try to find businesses that align with with you know your your goals and your your morals as well. So, you know, again, things that you know people who believe things that you believe. That's, yeah. that's people easiest to do business. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, Congratulations sure. <laughs> on everything that you've accomplished so far. Thanks for sharing it with us. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Graceful Conversations. Join us next time when we'll have another inspiring episode. Please remember to always stay graceful.